So this is my next Archibald entry. And it's been my Archibald entry for the last several years when I entered. But it's taken all these years. It's not quite finished, but it's pretty close. All right. Okay, so great. Um, before we go through to film you shooting the completion of 4D, and we have to go back a bit to how it all began, if we can get you to be brief. Um, <laughs> which I know is, is, is another it miracle before breakfast. It was 18 years ago. <laughs> yes, it's 18 years since you started the 4D, but before that you trained as an artist, and I'd like to even go back before that because I'd argue that as an artist you began as a performance artist, <laughs> using your body before you, you know, sort of... I always wanted to be a painter. Yeah. And I had uh, been offered a scholarship when I finished uh, school to go to the, uh, the Alexander Mackey school which is art teachers one but I wasn't at all interested in that. I went down to Melbourne Uni to study fine arts down there. Yeah, so you were at fine arts at Melbourne University. And Melbourne. at the same time I was enrolled in the National Gallery Art School then but never attended because I got into the world of artists modelling and making money to spend on uh, jeweled garments from the 20s that used to be sold at the Melbourne markets back then. So which artists did you model for back then? Oh, I modelled for them all down there. The, uh, the Monsal Vattenbaum, the uh, uh, Heavens, the, all the teachers of at Paran and other texts. Old George Bell, who died, he was a famous old yeah. man who taught art in his house. And, so, and another, quite a number of, of artists down there uh, had small classes or, or just wanted my work at their place uh, to do a painting or something. And how did you move from being an artist's model to becoming Madame Lash? What was the genesis there? There's not such a huge difference because uh, I loved being an artist's model because back then it was pretty good pay. Uh, of about a dollar and a <laughs> ten yeah. shillings an hour or something. Back then, uh, I could make that go quite a long way. Uh, the conditions for a model were very severe then. Uh, there'd be one bar heater and you'd be in an icy brick building. <laughs> no, uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> broken windows and what have you, and uh, one side of you would be boiling, you know, up to the calf and um, the rest of you. Frozen, and you'd have to. And they loved my standing poses because of my physique. Yeah. And uh, or lying in a twist. Of course, I got a few of those too, and that was money for jam. But yeah. uh, I learned to disassociate from my body bodily discomfort, and it was like being paid to meditate. Yeah. Uh, my mind was free. And uh, I learned to make it as free as possible so that uh, I transcended all discomfort and the three quarters of an hour would seem to be quite easy. I'd always done those sort of things. I, I'd learned at school to get my, when I went to a convent and uh, wanted to catch up on Catholicism, I was, and I, was, I loved my teacher who also taught Catholic doctrine. Yeah. And so I was reading through the library at night by the statue of St. Dominic and I went to, to bed when the first nuns fell to ring to wake them up. And what were you reading? I was reading about Catholicism. Yeah. Uh, everything that I was learning, I, she taught me four subjects, so she, <laughs> I yeah. was expert in all those subjects. I bashed them chalk out of her duster before she gets to that, you know, I was absolute conscious. That's the sort of behaviour I would like to have, uh, see myself now that I've master class material and uh, anyone wanting to approach me can do the same as I would do to someone I wanted to be like, thought, 
that nuns were incredible, that they had um, given up their lives to bring the best out in us. And uh, I wanted to single-handedly make it worth this woman's while, if no one else. Yes, well, you've been a great fan of Mary McKillop, of course. And well, uh, and my words. painting of yeah. Mary McKillop is really how I felt about this wonderful teacher I yeah. had when at school. But I know that Mary McKillop was just like me. She cut a sway through that part of the poorest Victoria with this gorgeous priest that all the nuns were in love with, Father Julian Woods. There's pictures of him. He was an absolute... Uh, <laughs> He was like, mad dish, and they were all, yeah, they were all fainting and having miracles happen and yeah. stigmata the works. And, uh, but they, although they, they offered no easy life, they had no source of funds themselves. They wanted to teach the poorest children and free. That was the mission to bring education to those who yeah. never would have had it that at first and then she brought homes to homeless girls and healing to the sick she started 175 convents filling them with nuns who were living for poverty yeah uh such was her magic and uh and the swearing power of gorgeous father julian who uh they had a they sprang along with each other something like you and me possibly Yes, look at friends. him, tall dark, looking very like Father Julian Woods. If you had the tall boots with the cuff on them, they're sort of pirate boots that he used to wear. Oh, I like the pirate yeah. priest in music. He was a wild guy.